In this video, we will start to create our spellbook so that we can take our spells and drag them onto our action bars here. Uh, but before we do that, there is a little adjustment we will have to do, and that is because it's going to be easier for us later when we create the inventory and we have to drag on items from the inventory in here. Um, because I already created the inventory in another project and I figured that a few small changes would make it easier for us later. So the first thing we'll have to do is to add some more sprites to the project if you haven't done it already. We will have to go to the RPG asset folder and we have to add the inventory um, folder here and we also have to add um, the quest log folder. So these two folders are the ones that you need to add if you haven't added everything already. So in the quest log folder there are lots of things and we will have to use um, the paper here and the background to create a spell book. So basically we are going to use the same uh, sprites as we have for the quest log to our spell book. Uh, besides that, I would like to make a little change here to my action bars. So I need to open up the canvas, find my action bar, and I'll have to change these three action buttons. So basically you can delete two and three, so you only have one left. Select action one and take the image here and find something called slot, uh, empty slot. And the empty slot here is the slot that is from the inventory, and here is something called empty slot. Uh, when you've done that, select the action button again and uh, then we will have to change the color back to white um, and of course you can keep it as, as a darker color, I just want the original color instead and then the frame here needs to be renamed to icon and as an image we will have to select something so let's try to select for example the fireball so this fireball here needs to be set on top of the button so you can see the edges of it so the icon needs to be resized, right? So just select the icon, select this tool here, and then drag it with shift down so that you can set it around the edges. So when you let go, it looks like the fireballs inside the the actual frame here. Um, let's see, I can't remember if I actually added a mask somewhere. No, I didn't. Yeah, everything is fine. So this is the icon and this is the action button. So with that done, we can take the action button and duplicate it three times by pressing Ctrl D a couple of times. Uh, one more thing I'm not very happy about is the size of my buttons. I think they take up way too much space here. I know when you play it now, it's going to give you a reference exception. We'll fix that. But it's taking up way too much space. So I think I'm going to select my action bar here. And I'm going to take the scale and put it to 0 0.5 instead so um let's see and we can make these a little larger 0 0.5 that's fine let's see how it looks the one it's too big so 0 0.5 one place and maybe put the action bar to 0 0.6 instead let's see here so and then you can of course adjust the position of the action bar again so it moves down so but the scaling is up to you. I just, yeah, I just like my buttons to be have this size instead. So with that done, we have to fix something in the script. So open up your UI manager script. Let's see if we can find our scripts managers UI manager. And inside the script, we will actually have to go to the action button instead. So if you open up the action button script and go to the top here, we can make a private image and call it icon and we need to serialize that field. So this is going to make it easier for us later when we have to add other things to the to the action button. So we have our icon here and we need to be able to access that somehow so you can right click on it and quick actions and encapsulate field. So we get this up and when you've done that we need to save it and jump back into Unity and then here we need to select the action button and you can see now it has an icon so we need to expand this and take the icon and drag it onto here and of course we need to do the same for the two others so on on the two others we'll also have to open them up and take the icon and drag onto that button so now the buttons has a reference to their own icon besides that we will have to select our UI manager and let's see it only has a reference to one button so element 1 needs to be action button 2 and element 2 needs to be action button 3 Let's just rename these to action one, two, 
and free. There we go. So inside the UI manager, we have a function called set usable. Right here, we are taking the buttons icon and changing it. Well, that's not what we need to do anymore. We need to write button dot my uh, icon. Let's see here, action button there, public icon on action button. So we should be able to go through it here. Let's try again. Button dot icon equals usable with my icon. So icon dot sprite. And we need to do the same down here. So my button dot image or dot icon dot color equals color dot white. Like so. Sorry about the confusion. So one thing here is the fact that I call this one icon. Um, let's just keep the same um, way of writing stuff. So go back to the action button right there and rename this to my icon. Just to make it easier to understand that it, it's a property. So we don't mix up this one and this one. So the property is always called my. Anyway, um, if we save this and go back to Unity and select all the icons here and select the color and make them transparent so we don't have anything on them and we play the game now they should have their icons back in place just as it was before we're just using uh, a little different um, composition of images and stuff instead because this is going to be easier later and it should still work if you click one of the spell buttons you still throw a spell at the enemy so with that in place we can start to create our spell book so our spell book is going to be a menu basically so just right click on menu and select UI and click image and rename the new image to spellbook. When we've done that, we need to select an image or a source image for our spellbook, and we are actually going to use our quest log for this. So if you have my sprites, you can select the quest log, or if you have your own sprite, of course, select the sprite that you would like to use for your spellbook. So first of all, we would like to set a scale. So the scale is 320 as the width, and the height is going to be 260. So these are just some values that I would like to use because I think it fits well. Um, but you can of course use other values if you want to. Besides that, we need to set the anchor to top left. And then we will have to take rotation and set it to minus 90. There we go. So the reason that I rotated is because the sides here are wider than the top. I would like the top to be thinner than the sides. Just looks better. If uh, we rotate it back, you'll see that it doesn't look the same when the sides are thinner. It looks stretch. So I think it looks less stretch if, if I do like this. So that's the base, right? Besides that, we will have to add the page. So right click and say UI and an image. And this image can be page. This is our spellbook page. So to do that, we can can you remember what the sprite is called? Let's see, frame two. So just take frame two and drag it onto your new page. And then just take it and scale it up so that it actually takes out lots of the space inside the spill book like so. So I don't want it to go all the way to the edges. I think this is like fine when there's little room around it. Like so, um, but again, I just adjust this so it looks exactly like you want it. I think that's okay there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So you can always let's maximize and play and, and see how it how it looks for you. So now we have the base and we have our page. So the first thing we have to do is to add some spells to it. And the first spell I would like to add is our fireball. So click on the page, right click on it, select UI and select an image. And then set the fireball icon here. And as you can see, it is flipped the wrong way. And that's because the parent is flipped minus 90 degrees. So we'll have to rotate this um, the opposite way just to uh, counter that so we can just say if we rotate this 90 uh, against the minus 90 then we get a, a zero rotation so we get the right angle here that's the original fireball and yeah we can just scale it down a little and um, the scale is going to be controlled by a parent at some point so just put it at a scale that you think is okay because I think the, the parent is going to control it with a layout group soon so let's see here. So that's our image. So besides the image, we need a button. 
and because we need to be able to click this in the game and then click on the action button down here to move it from there to there and to do that we need to add a button as child object of our fireball and the sprite that we need to use for this is our um what is it called frame yeah empty frame here um i don't know why we have two but select the empty frame and then you simply just scale it so it fits with the size of our fireball here actually you can set a native size and then just scale it down that's easier That looks fine. Uh, besides that, we have some text here. We can rename that to title. And then just move the text out here. And besides that, we also need a description. So right click on the title and duplicate it and rename it to description. Like so. So now we have a fireball button and we have a title and a description. Okay, so let's start with the title here. The title should be Fireball. Like so, and I would like to change the font to something else I have here. I'm just gonna select this Wusel one I have, and then I would like to change the color to some yellow color, kinda. I think I have a hex value copied here. I could use yeah. This is the hex value that I'm going to use. Again, this is just my preferences. You can always make it another color, blue or red or something. Um, this is just what I like and then would like to add a component and I would like to add an outline and I would like to make this outline alpha max so we can see the outline all the way around and I think the shadow is fine so as you can see right here the text is a little blurry and we just we can just do the same trick as we always do when we need to make the text more um, better looking and that's to take the scale on the actual te text here, the title, and put it to maybe 0 0.5 instead. Like so, oops, 0.5 instead. There, and just scale it up by increasing the the font size. Put it at right there. So we see that the font is is more clear now. And um, we can try to scale it up here. Yeah. So as you can see, the text around or the, the line around is not very uh, big right now. So we can take the effect here um, and put it a little up to two and minus two. So it gets it gets a little thicker. The outline here, let's see, looks good. So this is just something you can adjust until it looks like something you would like. Um, besides that, we need to change the description, right? So we can actually take our um, font type here, and select the description and set the font again to the same and again we can do the same with the scaling here so the quality of the text is the same just a little larger and then we set the font size a little up shouldn't be the same size as the title but just a little less and then we'd like to have it in the left side and what do we do with the title? I would also like the title to be in the left side there. And don't worry, we're going to use some UI elements to line this up, so don't worry about the alignment right now. And then we need to put in the description, and the description could be throws a fireball at the enemy. There we go. Now we have a description and a title. When you have the fireball, we can select the page and add component and select a horizontal layout group. So the reason that we're using a horizontal layout group instead is because instead of a vertical is because we uh, rotated our rect transform. So horizontal is basically going to be vertical and vertical is going to be horizontal. So select that. And then we'll have to say, well, why should we align it up or up or right, I think there oh not all right let's see lower right lower left there okay so lower left that's the top right apparently so uh, because of the rotation the child alignment is a little off of course so 
we will have to add some extra fireballs. Um, so click on the fireball, click Control D to duplicate, and again Control D to duplicate. So now we have three fireballs. We don't need fireballs, of course, so we will have to change the icons of some of them. So select fireball two and rename it to first bolt, and select the icon here, and select the first bolt there, and then you can of course open up the button and change the title to first bolt. And the description throws a frostbolt at the enemy. And then the last fireball will have to rename to thunder on the bolt and open up the button, change the description to thunder. And then change the description, throws a thunder at the enemy. And of course, the most important thing, remember to change the icon thunder so they're placed on the side and we are not really happy about that so select the page and you can adjust the distance between them here actually I would like to find where the left side is there so bottom is left side let's move it a little out and then the spacing between them can be pulled in like this like so and then we also have to find the top left there there we go so I am pretty happy with this if you're not happy with the space you can of course always adjust it but I think this looks fine if I maximize it and play I have a fireball a first ball and a thunderbolt here and there's a description that fits them if you're not happy about the way the text is divided on the two lines you can always adjust it as you can see here, the fireball and the frostbolt is totally fine, but the thunderbolt is not okay because we can't see the end of the description here. So to fix this, we can always go into Unity and select description and the title on all of the um, all of the spell here, and then drag all of them at the same time until that enemy is written on the second line alone, as you can see here, because now all the text looks the same. With that done, you will see that it moved all the text to the right. So you will have to select all the buttons, like so. And then select the padding here and take the lift and drag it to the lift. And then drag all the text as close to the spills as you want to. So with that done, we can maximize again. And you'll see we're now able to see all the spills and it looks more identical the way the description is written. So that's what I want to do in this video. In the next video, we'll start opening and closing our spellbook. And we'll also start working on the fact that we can take a spell and then drag it onto the action button and use it. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.